Neil, can you believe it's a, a year back at Celtic Park? Uh, no, I can't. It um, seems like yesterday, but uh, there's a long, long time in my life that. Um, very tumultuous, exciting, raw at times, but uh, you know, very uh, immensely fulfilling. And to be preparing for a Europa League last 32 tie on that anniversary, was it? have you achieved more than you thought you would? I'm not giving that much thought, really. You know, I've just been so busy, preoccupied with, you know, the amount of games. Obviously, coming in last season, I was trying to win the treble, and then obviously then trying to keep the momentum going as, as much as possible. So we had a great Europa League group. We've had a good result in Copenhagen, and, you know, hopefully we can... You know, finish the job off tomorrow night, but we're under no illusions how difficult that's going to be. Given the position that you are going into this tie tomorrow night, how confident are the players? Yeah, they're, they're quietly confident. You know, they're at home. Their home record's good, uh, but there'll be no complacency or taking anything for granted. Copenhagen gave us a really tough second half out, out there. Um, we had to work really hard to you know, avoid going behind. We didn't start the second half well, you know, we, we counter-attacked well in the second half, but we could play a lot better than what we did in the second half. The first half performance was was superb. We weren't able to carry that on, and maybe a draw was probably a fair result on the night, but with the chances we created and the good chances we created, we felt we could have come away with a win. Neil, a result tomorrow night against Copenhagen would mean that Celtic would win a post-group stage European game for the first time in 16 years. Would this be probably the best opportunity for the club to do that? Well, it's a, it's like it's an opportunity, you know, and uh, I wasn't aware of that. Um, so maybe that lacks as extra motivation for the players. So um, we're not thinking about records or timelines or anything like this. We're thinking about the opposition here good and how we overcome them over the 90 minutes or it may go to extra time, you never know. The Copenhagen coach says he feels it's a very open game, still still very much anyone's game. Is that the message that you'll be giving to your players as well? Yeah, I think it's. I think we're at home so that gives us a bit of an advantage, you know. I didn't think um, there was much between the teams and the throughs of the game. So, yeah, the tie is still there for both teams. I suppose I can understand where most of is coming from. In terms of team update, Scott Brown, James Forrest and Cham? James and Scott are both fit. Ollie is not fit um, and will be out for maybe another week. Much of a boost to have Scott Brown, particular back playing. That's a great boost, you know. Um, I mean, we had a great win at the weekend, but obviously having Scott and his experience and the way he's been playing this season, to have him in the team is obviously, you know, confidence booster for the squad. And Jamesy as well, you know, we know James is a big game player and what he can bring to the team as well. There'll be no complacency from the, the players, Neil, but do the fans have to guard against thinking this tie is all but done? Yes, yes. I mean, Copenhagen are, are a dangerous team and there's no formalities at this stage of the competition for anyone, um, well, unless other teams have a big lead from the first leg. This, It's one each, you know. The, the tie could psychologically switch either way. You know, hopefully we can get the first goal and get on the front foot, but um, we're going to have to earn the right to play. Neil, how key has that mentality been in this European run? It's been fantastic, you know, um, so far. I want it to continue. I want us to be in the last 16. I think um, we're good enough to do that, but we're going to have to play well. Um, the mentality of the team, this team, you know, over the last three or four years, domestically, has been fantastic. We've come up short at this round the last couple of years. We want to better that, if we can. Um, and we're at home. We've got a s amazing support. Support on Sunday against Kilmarnock when we're going down. We're fantastic, and we're going to need all of that. It's going to be a big European night, and, and one to see ever, hopefully. What would it say about Celtic if you are able to, to make it to the last 16, then, in terms of improvement in Europe? We're improving. And how good, in terms of that feel-good factor, does it bring that you know you can compete then in Europe when, when you said you had fallen short at this stage the last couple of seasons? Well, it, it, it just gives us another opportunity to go further in the tournament, which is what we want to do. We want to play against you know, 
some of the best teams in Europe and there's still some quality sides in this competition. So and it builds a bit of momentum, builds confidence, you know, and I'm not getting carried away because we have a very difficult game to overcome first, so we'll we'll deal with that afterwards. Neil, we saw four three three last week when you were away in Denmark, but the last few games at home you've gone to three five two and you said you want to be on the front foot. Could we see that formation again tomorrow night? Possibly, yeah. Yeah. Possibly. I'm not I'm not gonna obviously give the team away or the formation away, but yeah, it's a possibility, yes. And uh, also, I just want to ask about Copenhagen themselves. Do you expect them to be slightly more defensive, perhaps just try and nick an away goal and defend from there, or do you think they'll come here and try and win the match? Well, I think they'll try and come and win the match. You know, um, he sort of, you know, mixed the match this teams for the domestic games. He's made a few changes, whether it be at fullback or at centre forward. Um, so he, he may throw all his eggs in one basket for this game. So again, that makes him a very dangerous opponent. Neil, going back on to this time last year, you walked in the door. There was a bit of shock at Brendan leaving. Um, you managed to steady the ship and go on, and certainly on last season, improved by by almost every measure. How how have you managed to do that? Hard work. You know, I don't take any sort of great achievement from it. You know, I've got a great backroom staff, and the players are fantastic. You know, and they've been fantastic consistently. Well, uh, we've still got a bit of work to do this season to you know get to where we want to be so um you know i'm not going to take too much credit as of yet or if any i'm delighted with the way things have gone but um you know still a couple of months this season to go yeah but but there were people questioning whether you could match or, or improve on on what brendan had achieved it must give you satisfaction although the job is still to be completed plenty of jobs still to be done it must give you immense satisfaction to <coughs> stand here and say apart from maybe the Champions League, that things couldn't really have gone any better to this stage? Oh, look, I'm, I'm delighted with the way things have gone. I'm, I'm really proud of the team and I'm you know, really proud of the style of football that they're playing at the minute. So, you know, every one of them has made a positive contribution this season. So, again, you know, they're not going to blow me on Trump, but here, you know, it's a team effort and, um, you know, everyone's played their part. Neil, Neil, a question from, from Danish Press. Uh, in the last two years, Copenhagen have... Uh, maximum let in one goal in Europe in, in their games. I think it's around 25 games. Um, it could go to penalties. Have you practiced penalties before this this game? Yes, you have. Yes. Right. And, and and another but question. You, you don't know what personnel is going to be on the pitch at, at that uh, time. You know, but yeah. uh, we are wary of that. Yeah. Remember the game against Brun Bay. Uh, what do you thought? You, you, with with hip, hips. Hips, yeah. I thought yeah. we were very unlucky not to go through. <laughs> I thought we were the better team on the night, you know. So, yeah, that was a sore one because we played really, really well against a very good Bromby side. But Pookie played in that. Ah, he did. He yeah, did. Pookie played. Yeah, yeah, he did. Yeah, so, yeah, it was a bit of a sore one. So I'm hoping I don't have to go through that ordeal again. Uh, how much do you draw on your experience of the Seville run for these sort of games? <coughs> It's a long time ago, you know, you thought of like well, 17 years now, it's incredible how quickly the time goes, but yeah, I mean, you can pass that on to the players, you know, you know, John Kennedy was around at that time, Damien I mean, Duff played for Fulham in a Europa final as well, so, you know, my backroom team have got the pedigree to know how to, you know, perform in these competitions, but, you know, ultimately we are down to the players tomorrow night and, you know, maximising home advantage. Neil, just quickly, um, I think we've seen a proposal from Copenhagen uh, to protect places in Europe for teams like Copenhagen, Ajax, Celtic, or to certainly give them uh, a guaranteed opportunity to get into the Champions League in the face of these proposals that seem to be floating around from UEFA. Just speaking generally, big nights like this in Europe at Celtic Park, they're part of this club's DNA. Clubs should have the opportunity to to participate in big nights like this, shouldn't they? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, um, and I think the smaller countries have, you know, a far more difficult route into the Champions League than some of the other countries or the richer countries. And um, you know, I would echo what that proposal of Copenhagen or what, and you know, a better ch even the Eastern European bloc countries have made that point over the last few years as well. So there has to be a fairer chance for. You know, countries like ourselves to get a, a a better crack at the Champions League. But you know, we've got to play four qualifiers just to qualify. You know, that's eight games. That's a, a quarter of a season. So I think it's a very difficult thing to 
ask of teams, you know, with the amount of games we play already and with a small close season, you're going into really important games straight away. It's, look, we've been talking about this for a long time and I think, you know, the voices are beginning to be heard now.